Oh, no, thank you, everlasting Father, the creator of heaven and earth. We bless you. We worship you. We adore your holy name. Thank you for making it possible for us to see this wonderful new day. Thank you, Father, for the last working day of this month. Thank you, Father, for the great things that you have done for us in this month of April. Father, we are grateful. Thank you, Almighty God, for your protection, for provision. Thank you for granting us victory over sin and unseen battles. Father, we give you all the praise. Be thou exalted in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we worship you. We welcome you. Have your way. Father, we ask that you move like never before. In the mighty name of Jesus, bless your children even as they connect they shall not leave this prayer meeting, the fellowship, the same way they connected. Give them a divine visitation, O Lord. Touch them. Let there be an encounter. In the mighty name of Jesus, I saw the network, the broadcast, ourselves, each and everyone connected, myself in the pool of the blood of Jesus. Let your blood be a total covering for us. In the name of Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Holy Spirit, have your way. Speak through me. Less of me and more of you. In the mighty name of Jesus, have your way, O Lord. I saw the platform, the broadcast, the network, our prayers, our declarations. In the pool of the blood of Jesus, let your will and your will alone be done. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you for joining. Thank you for connecting. You are welcome. Even as you join, please share. Invite someone to be blessed. Hallelujah. God has the final say. Who has the final say in your life? If you know who has the final say in your life, please type it in the comment box. Who has the final say? Who has the final say in that situation? Who has the final say in that situation that you're going through? Who has the final say in your life? I know for sure that God has the final say in my life. God has the final say in this ministry. God has the final say. Hallelujah in your life. Jesus has the final say. Yes. And when we talk about someone having the final say, it's someone who has total authority, total control, final decision final conclusion over a particular matter, over a particular case, over a particular situation, over a particular issue. And Jehovah, the almighty God, has the final say in all issues of life. Hallelujah. He has the final say because he is our God. He has the final say because he created you and I. He has the final say because he owns the earth and everything that is there. That's in this earth. He owns it. He has the final say because he is Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He has the final say because he's the land of the tribe of Judah. He's the way maker, the miracle working God. He has the final say because he is our protector, provider, healer. He has the final say because he is the soon and coming king. Yes, he has the final say. I know it's very easy for us to get discouraged. It's very easy for us to accept situations the way we see it or it, the way it is. We accept it and say maybe that is the way it's meant to be. But I want you to know for sure that it is not over until God says it's over. You could have concluded that it's over. People could have concluded that it is over for you. But I want you to know right now and here that it is not over until God says it is over. That medical report that was given to you, it may look so bad. The doctor is telling you no more. There is no sick. There's no solution. There is no solution to this situation, this sickness. There's no solution to this disease. You have to leave off this medication the rest of your life. But that doctor is not God. He doesn't have the final say. God has the final say. God has the final say. Over your life, that situation, long standing situation that have been so long, long, yes. And you're like, you know what? I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think that's for me. And you're giving up. Do not give up on God. Because God will not give up on you. He has the final say. People may be against you. 
People may be laughing at you, mocking, mocking you. People may have written you off. People may have said, you know what? Oh, no. She, uh, we've, we've waited for so long. I don't think it's going to happen for her. They are not God. God is about, about to surprise them by blessing you. God is about, about to shut their mouth by blessing you. He has the final say. Abraham and Sarah were so old. They were old. They were way past childbearing age. But God said, said Abraham's wife was going to have a baby. That Sarah was going to carry a child. She laughed. <laughs> she, she probably was like, hmm. does it know how old I am? Me, carry a child. But it came to pass. It came to pass. Sarah became pregnant. She got pregnant and she had a child. Even at her old age. If our God can do it for Sarah, do it for Hannah, for Rachel, he will do it for you who is trusting God for your own seed. He will do it for you. You who is trusting God for your marital breakthrough, marital blessing to settle down maritally, and people are laughing at you, mocking at the written you up. They say, oh no, she's too old. I don't think she's going to get married. Get ready. Our God has the final say and he has plans for you. Plans to bless you. Plans for you to rejoice and to celebrate. Today is the very last working day of the month of April. And we're crossing into the month of May of our uncommon testimonies. In this month of May, you shall carry your testimonies. It's going to be uncommon. You know why it's going to be uncommon? It will be something that people will be like, wow, this has to be God. It is testimony that is not pop. People are just, people, are, it will be wow. It will, you yourself will be surprised. Uncommon testimonies as you cross into the month of May. Get ready. Get ready. God has the final say. And he's about to shut your mockers. He's about to surprise you. He's about to surprise people around you with that blessing. That blessing. People may have counted you out, but God has already counted you in. Did you hear that? People may have counted you out, but God has already counted you in. God has already counted you in. We look at the outside. We look at the outside, but God looks at the heart. God looks at the heart. People may have counted you out and you don't even know. People are looking at you like, mm -mm, laughing at you, saying things. But God has already counted you in. Get ready for the manifestation of your blessings. Get ready for the manifestation of your blessings. If we look at the book of Isaiah, Chapter 14, verse 24. It reads, The Lord of heaven's armies has sworn this oath. It will all happen as I have planned. It will be as I have decided. It is going to happen the way God has planned it. It's going to happen the way God has decided, not the way man has decided, not the way man has planned it, but the way God has planned it. He has he's saying, surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. As I have proposed, so shall it stand. The promises of God concerning your life, the promises of God to you, will stand. Not what the doctor is saying to you. Not what people are saying to you. But what the Lord has said to you, what he is saying to you. Hold on to that promise. That promise of God to you. That promise of God to you that you will carry your own seed. That promise of God to you that you will get married. That promise of God to you that, that you will prosper. That promise of God that you will be known all over the world for good. That promise of God that you will be promoted. That promise of God that you will be healed. Hold on to that promise. Hold on to that promise. Because what God has for you won't go to anyone else. It will come to you. Did you hear that? What God has for you will not go to someone else. It will. 
come to you. It is yours. It is yours. God is on the throne and he's working things for your own good. If you missed yesterday's prayer meeting, go back and listen to the words of yesterday. Father has the final say. Nothing anyone can do about it. They will try. They will try to manipulate things. They will try to make you worry. They will try to say things. They will try to discredit you. But our father is still on the throne. He's still on the throne. What has your name on it will come to you. Nobody can take it away from you, no matter how they try. No matter how they try to manipulate things. What is yours is yours. And that blessing with your name on it, that breakthrough with your name on it is coming to you. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Right from today, you know the promises of God concerning your life. Every time you wake up in the morning, noontime, evening, declare it upon your life. Declare those promises. Do not allow the enemy to declare his own promises upon your life. No, you declare God's promises upon your life. Do not let people declare the promises of the devil upon your life. No, you declare the promises of God. When someone is saying to you, I don't think this is going to happen to you, counteract it right and say, no, I rebuke you. No, that is not what it is. My God has the last say. My God has the final say. You have pain in your body. Lay your hand on, upon that and say, you know you pain. I am not a candidate of yours. You do not belong to this body. My God has the final say. My God says and it overrules whatever any other person says. He has a final say on everyone and everything, on every situation. You overrule what the enemy says when that voice speaks to you. That evil voice, negative or manipulative voice, that voice that is not of God is speaking. You rebuke that voice and say to that voice, I overrule you by the most high God. What you say is overruled by almighty God. Because my father in heaven has the final say. And when you rebuke the enemy, he will flee. When we say we're rebuking the enemy, people think they need to see the enemy face to face. No. You rebuke the enemy when the enemy is bringing his minister, he's ministering to, your, to you. He's saying those negative things to you. He's trying to confuse you. He's trying to use his tactics on you. Trying to instill fear in you. You rebuke him, speak it out to say, I rebuke you. And I overrule whatever you are saying by the word of the Most High God, by his promises to me. He has the final say over my life. He is my creator. He created me. Don't let people talk you out of what God put in your heart. Don't let anybody convince you. Don't let anybody talk you out of that promises of God. You know the promises of God concerning your life, concerning that situation. Do not let people talk you out. Do not let people confuse you. Stand on God's promises. Hold on to it. Declare it over your life every day. Do not shut your mouth. No, declare it. As you declare it, so shall it be. As you declare, the angels grab it and they run. But someone, you, you're having a little bit of pain. You begin to claim that pain as if it's yours. You're telling somebody, oh, this is my pain. Yo, it's not your pain. No, it's not your pain. You have migraine. No, it is not your migraine. Don't say mine. No, it is not your migraine. And as you rebuke it, the, the, the enemy and his agents, his, his agents, they will carry their load, carry their load away as you rebuke it, you reject it. But when you start pampering it, to start accepting it, oh, this is my migraine, this pain, uh, this is my leg, is hurting me. You are accepting that. I mean, they will, they will stand there and smile. Oh, yeah, she accepted it. Let me, let me go and call the others. They, they, will call, they will call depression. They will call uh, waist pain. They will call uh, ear infection. They will call malaria. They will start calling different, they will call others to come because you are accepting it. 
No, when that doctor gives you that report, doctor, thank you so much. But my God has the final say, I will believe the report of the Lord. That is the only report I will believe. That is the only report I will believe. So no matter the situation that you're about to be facing, they are never going to work out. That situation is not going to work out. You rebuke that situation. You speak to that and say, enough is enough. It's time for you to leave. Pack your bag and baggages out of my life. When you begin to do this, make it, make it a lifestyle, you, begin, you declare, declare daily upon yourself, your home, your marriage, your children, if you have children, upon your spouse, upon your business, your career, your job. You declare, I'm telling you, you will see things turn around for your own good. There will be a change. There will be a move. You will not be at the same place you are. You will move. You will move forward. Forward. Before you know it, you've moved finally out. Because the first time you say it, they will be like, you know, I think she's, you know, she just, I think she just, she's not going to continue. It's just, she's not. Gonna. But when he sees that you're consistent, you keep declaring those declarations every day. They have no choice than to run. They have no choice than to leave you and your family alone. He has the final say. If you look at the story of the adulterous, adulterous woman in the Bible, she was being accused. They wanted to stone her to death. But Jesus said to them, let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw stone at her. They brought her to Jesus. But what happened? They knew very well that they, 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 they are sinners too. There was no one of them without a sin. They left her one by one. They left her one by one until she was left alone with Jesus. And Jesus asked her, where are the people? Where are the ones that condemned you? And she said, no one. They are all gone. And Jesus told her, neither do I condemn you. Go now and live your life free of sin. You are set free. Because Jesus had the final say in her life. Final say in that situation. We talked about Peter yesterday. Peter, Peter is a fisherman. They've told all night and was not, was not able to catch any. But Jesus just, Jesus finally said to them, go to that deeper place. Go there and cast your net. And they did. And what happened? They caught a lot. Even their nets started breaking. They had to beckon on people to come and help them. He has the final say. So what is that promise that God has given to you? Has he spoken to you through a man, a woman of God towards you? Has he spoken to you in, in your dreams? There's been a vision. You have read it in the word of God. You're standing on a scripture that was given to you. You're standing after you're praying so hard. Why don't you hold on to that promise? If not, hold on to the promise of Genesis 1, 28. For those who are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. The fruit will multiply. It is a command from the Lord. I want you to know that you are not in control. You are not in control of your life. Father is in control. Do not think you are in control. You have to surrender everything to him. Jehovah the Almighty has the final say, has the total control over everything that concerns you. Over your conception, over your marriage, over your life. Over your home, your business, your profession. He's the one that decides when we will even die. So it is wise for us to surrender all to him. Let him have the way. Let him have his way and lead. Let him have his way and lead us. We need to let go. I mentioned yesterday, let go of the past. Let go of those things that we're taking, we're trying to hold on to. And Father is saying, let go. Don't worry about those things. Focus on the promises that I've given to you. 
I have promises that God has given to me. I got those promises years back and they are now beginning to happen now after a couple of years. But I held on to those promises. Every time I go back to those promises and I remind God of those promises, then that's what you are supposed to do. Hold on to those promises. Hold on. He's not a covenant breaker. When he promises, he brings it to come to pass. Whatever he has said will surely come to your pass in your life. It will surely come to pass in your life. Hold on to God's promises. Be fully persuaded what God has promised because he will surely perform it. If we look at the book of Proverbs chapter 16, quickly, Proverbs chapter 16. If you have your Bible, please open with me to the book of Proverbs chapter 16, verses 1. It reads, he can make, we can make our own plans. You can make your own plans, but the Lord gives the right answer. That means he has the final say. He gives the right answer. People may be pure in their own eyes, but the Lord examines their motives. So commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. Surrender it to him and you, your plans will succeed. Commit your plans to him and your plans will succeed. People make plans in their minds, but the Lord gives them the right words to say. Put your plans in front of the Lord so that what you want to do will go well. Are you going jumping from one place to another? You are praying, but at the same time, you're seeking help in other places that does not please God that is against the will of God. You need to surrender all to him. And when you surrender something to him, you take your eyes off it and do not worry how it's going to happen. How is he going to do it? Trust in the Lord. But a lot of people are praying, Father, do it for me. And they finish praying. In the next few minutes, they've gone to do things they shouldn't be doing. They're already doubting. They don't have faith anymore. Somebody's calling them on the phone. The enemy is sending tactics, using people to confuse them. Somebody's calling the phone and say, oh, I know this place to take you to. Let's go here. Let's go here. Let's go here. Try this person. Try this. No. If you do that, God will just relax and just be watching you. And by the time you go round and round and round, you still come back to God. And then you'd have wasted time. You'd have wasted, you'd have missed it. Probably some, some people end up missing it. Because at that time, that was the time the Lord has said to deliver that thing to you. And the enemy knows that that blessing is coming. And then he, he, use, he, he uses people, thoughts, ideas that are from the devil. He uses it to just confuse you. You become depressed, weary, tired. Say, you know what? I cannot wait for this anymore. I have to try this. I have to try this. I have to try this. That is one thing we have to pray against, spirit of confusion. Say, Lord, I don't want to be confused. I want to be focused. We just finished a seven days fasting. Are you patient enough? Doing what you're supposed to do after fasting, which is praising, thanking him for what he has done, reading the word and holding on to the promises of God. But instead, we finish the fast. You're jumping from one place and saying, you know what? I can't wait. You're expecting to happen right there and there. It does not work that way. The enemy will try any way, any means, any how to pull you out of your blessings, to make you miss the promises of God concerning your life. Do not let that happen. Do not let that happen. He has promised he will bring it to come to pass. Keep on declaring God's word over your situation. Keep on declaring God's promises over your situation. Blessed is she that believe. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. If you look at the book of Luke 145. Blessed is she that believes. You say you believe. You have to hold on. For there shall be a performance of those things. Those things the Lord told her will surely come to pass. 
God has the final say in matters that concern you as a child of God. He will perfect what concerns you. He will do everything he has promised. Even if the report is unpleasant, hold on to the promises of God. God can reverse that and he can change it to favor you. Because those things which are impossible with men are possible with God. So today, Jesus will speak to your situation and there will be a change in the mighty name of Jesus. He has the power to reverse. He has the power to change any report whatsoever. He is the unchangeable changer. The impossibility specialist. So Father, we speak to your situation and there will be a change. In the mighty name of Jesus, let us begin to thank God. Say, Father, I thank you. Thank you, Father, for this word. Thank you for today. Thank you because I know you have the final say over the situation, over the issues of my life, over the issues of my home, of my marriage, over the issues of my, my finances, my business, my job, over the issues of my children. You have the final say. Ask for mercy, Father. I ask for mercy if I've been acting foolishly, if I've been doing things I shouldn't have done, if I've been acting as if I am in control. Have mercy on me. Forgive me, Lord. I surrender all to you now. I surrender everything to you so that you can take total control, so that you can have the final say in my life, in my situation. Father, have mercy. Show me mercy, Lord. Is there someone on the sound of my voice? And you've not even given your life to Christ. You've not even surrendered your life to Christ at all. You've never ever. Hey, you want to do that. You want to surrender your life to Christ and say, Father, take over. I surrender all to you. You have the final say. Take over, Lord. I'll be glad and happy to lead in the salvation prayer. Prayer to become born again, to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. If that person is you, you want to give your life to Christ. You want to accept him as your Lord and personal Savior. You want it to take over. You want it to have the final say in your life. Or you want to rededicate your life to Christ. I want you to say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come into your presence as a sinner. I confess all my sins. Come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Forgive my sins. Cleanse me. Sanctify me and make me whole by your blood. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. I promise to serve you forever and ever. Amen. Put your hand on your chest and say, I am saved. I am saved. I am saved. I ask that you fill me with the power of the Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. If you sincerely said that prayer, if you sincerely gave your life to Christ, Welcome to the family of God. Congratulations. Heaven is rejoicing. And just rejoice for one soul that is one for Christ. I rejoice with you. You have made the best decision ever to surrender all to him. All to him. So that he can be in total control to take over, to have the final say. Even as you've given your life to Christ, abstain from anything whatsoever that will make you sin against God. Study the word of God. Worship in the, abide in him and he will abide in you. May you be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. In the mighty name of Jesus. All the answers that you have, all the questions that you have the answers are in the Bible. Get a Bible, get a physical Bible, study the word of God. If you don't know where to start, you can start from the very first chapter or the very first book of the new of the New Testament, the book of Matthew. Or you can go with the scriptures that we share here on the live broadcast. Study God's word. If you don't have the physical Bible, download the Bible app on your phone and study God's word. Do well in it. Promises of God concerning your life. Our lives are in the word of God. Father, I thank you. 
Thank you, Father, for what you are doing. We are grateful, O Lord. Thank you, Father, because you have the final say in our lives. Thank you, Father, for the lives of those who just gave their lives to you. Father, the grace and the strength to continue to do your will. Grant unto them. Give unto them. In the name of Jesus, they have no power of their own, but Lord, they rely upon you. Father, see them through. Help them, O Lord, in this new journey. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. In the name of Jesus. I want us all to begin to ask the Lord to reverse every evil statement, every evil words, every negative word that has been spoken, that has been made about you or spoken against you. That almighty God reverse Satan because God alone has the final say. Let it be reversed. Let every evil statement, let every evil word, let every evil declaration, negative prophecy, evil prophecy that has been said against you, that has been declared against you, that has been made about you, begin to reverse it, oh Lord. Say, Father, reverse it. Reverse the negative report from the doctor. Reverse the negative statement made about me, made against me by people. Things that have been said. Father, reverse it. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father has the power to reverse anything. Father has the power to cancel anything. Father has the power to change that thing. Those words, negative words, bad words has been spoken over your life. Maybe your parents spoke evil words, uh, negative words over your life. Uh, is it someone you were in a relationship with? Uh, spoke negative words over your life. Uh, is it your neighbor, uh, someone who you had a, a conflict with? Uh, spoke negative words against you. Uh, said things that are not right. Uh, or the doctor has said negative words, uh, trying to do his job, say, thinking he's doing his job, but has spoken something negative uh, over your life. Uh, say, Father, reverse those negative statements uh, against me, against my family. Uh, in the name name of Jesus. Uh, every negative prayer that has been said over your life, over your family, uh, will reverse it right now. Uh, by the blood of Jesus. Uh, every negative was spoken against your finances, uh, against your wealth, uh, against your prosperity, uh, against your riches, uh, against your health. Uh, we reverse it. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, every negative thing uh, that has been done against you, we destroy it now uh, by the fire of the Holy Ghost uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let Father begin to speak. Say, Father, begin to speak. Father, speak and let everything that is holding you captive. Everything that is holding your blessings and breakthrough be released. Uh, let them release it by the voice of the Lord. Uh, Father, speak. Uh, Father, speak into my situation. Uh, let everything that is holding me captive, uh, holding my blessings captive, uh, holding my breakthroughs captive, uh, let them hear your voice and release me uh, and release my blessings uh, and release my breakthroughs uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, in the name of Jesus, let everything of mine that has been caged. I want you to pray this prayer. Lord, let everything that has been caged, that is of mine, that has been caged. My blessings, my breakthroughs, that has been caged, that has been chained, that has been tied. Manda Brasunda Cobra Soul. Let it be released by your voice. Speak that word, O Lord, because you have the final say, Lord. Speak that word, O Lord, because you have the final say over my situation. And let that breakthrough of Maya, let that breakthrough of Maya be released. Let the blessings of Maya be released. Let me be released from every cage. Let me be released from everywhere that I've been held captive, that I've been tied down, that I've been chained by that word. Let my womb be released. Wherever my womb has been chained, uh, wherever my womb has been tied, uh, let it be released uh, by your word, oh Lord. Uh, let my marriage be released, uh, 
whatever they have tied my marriage um, that they said I will not get married father let my marriage be released uh, by that word oh lord uh, that final say from you uh, let my wedding gown be released uh, let my wedding ring be released uh, let my children be released uh, let my blessings be released uh, let my promotion be released uh, let my elevation be released uh, let my approval be released uh, father speak oh god uh, because you have the final say over my life. Honey, my cold soul. Even as the Lord speaks, it overrides. Ha! It changes. Um, it turns situation around. We override it. Uh, His word overrides. Um, overrides. Uh, override and override and override. It overturns. It overturns. It overturns the word of the enemy. It overturns uh, that negative words uh, that they have spoken. Negative causes. Uh, negative incantation. Incantation against your life, against things that concerns you. It's overturned, even as the Lord speaks. How we need God saying that final say, Father, speak. Father, speak over my life. Let my breakthrough be released. Let my blessings be released. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. Father, I ask, oh Lord, that you make a way for your children from today. Father, make a way for them. In the mighty name of Jesus, make a way where there seems to be no way. Make a way, oh God, where it seems impossible, Father, make a way. In the mighty name of Jesus, uh, every evil report uh, over your children uh, is cancelled. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, amen. By the mercies of God, we cancel every negative word. We cancel every negative causes. Uh, we cancel every negative covenant. Uh, every negative incantation. Every negative prayer. Evil prayer. Evil prophecy over your life. Uh, over your situation. Uh, we cancel it oh by the message of god we cancel it uh, in the name of jesus amen father we hear your cry today and answer you speedily in the mighty name of jesus amen father remember your children for good remember all the good things that they have done remember all the good things that they have done father and turn things around for their good in the mighty name of jesus Every negative words, negative pronunciation, negative and evil prayers, working against their life, working against their blessings, their breakthrough, working against their glory, their des destiny. Father, we terminate those reports. Uh, we reject those reports. Uh, we rebuke those reports. Uh, we destroy those pronounce pronouncements uh, over their lives. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, amen. I pray the blood of Jesus over your children. I pray the blood of Jesus over their homes and marriages. I pray the blood over their lives, their wombs. Uh, I pray the blood over their jobs, their careers. I pray the blood over their businesses. Uh, I pray the blood over their finances. Uh, I pray the blood of Jesus over that children, over that spouse, oh Lord. I ask that you build a hedge of fire around your children. No evil shall be for them. We cancel every attack of the enemy against them. We cancel every trap of the enemy against them. We cancel every orchestration of the enemy against them. It shall not prosper. It shall not come to pass. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Some of you, the enemy... What the enemy is doing is trying to put um, a negative report from the doctor to, dis to make you get depressed, to discourage you, to confuse you. Do not worry about those reports. Do not focus on those reports. What I want you to do is to pick up that report that was given to you by the doctor. After this prayer meeting, just wave it and sing praise to the Lord. Sing praise to the Lord. Raise that report. Sing praise to the Lord. Even if it's not a report from doctor, but there's something weighing you down. There's something that is a situation. I'm getting this, this direction, this assignment. Do it. And the Lord will do it for you. Whatever it is, write it out. Use a pen. Write it out on a paper. The book. Place that book, that paper on the ground and step on it. By faith. Declare and say, I am over you. I have victory over you, whatever that thing is. Declare unto that thing, say, I overcome you. You have been overturned. You have been overturned. My God has a final say because some of you have accepted it, you've embraced it, you've taken it, you've accepted it. No, you are going to tell that thing, you are not here to stay. 
You are not part of me. I am not a candidate of yours. You, you have to speak to that thing. Be it a reporter, write it out what those things are. Place it on the ground. Step on it. Say, I am over you. Step on it. I have won. I have won this battle. I am victorious. My God has the final say and his final say to me is that I am fruitful. He said to me is that I am healed. You say it, declare it. Say, for that reason, I rebuke you. For that reason, I destroy you. I cancel you. No more. And I send you back to sender. Evil load be carried by your evil, whoever brought it. Evil load back to sender. I know what I am saying. If you don't remember everything I said, go back and play this portion of the video. And say what I say. And as you are saying it, you'll be led. The Holy Spirit will put, will put words in your mouth. Will put the right words in your mouth. You will, be, you will see yourself declaring more than even what I just said. You will declare what he needs you to pray about. You will you'll be hearing. And as you hear it, declare it. Speak it out. And a lot of you will testify. I had to pause because I heard that. And I had to give that, say that out. A lot of you will testify. In the name of Jesus, what God has proposed and promised to you will manifest. In the name of Jesus, it will manifest speedily. In the name of Jesus, today you will possess your possession. Whatever the enemies has said concerning you is cancelled, is destroyed, is crossed out, is destroyed. In the name of Jesus, amen. We are returning it back to sender. We're sending it back to the devil and his agents. We're sending it back to the camp of the enemy. Whatever they have said concerning you is canceled. It's not yours. It has not come to stay. It has to go back. It has to go back. Every evil report affecting you is reversed. Is canceled. Is destroyed. In the name of Jesus, amen. Father, thank you. Thank you, Almighty God, because from now on, only good things will continue to will start happening in your life. Only good things would enter your life right from today and turn your life around. In the mighty name of Jesus, no more going back, no more backwardness, forward, elevation, promotion, higher ground. That is your portion. Testimony, breakthroughs, blessings. To be testimony back to back. From glory to glory. Blessings to blessings. Favor to favor. So shall it be for you, your family, your household, your home, your marriage. In the name of Jesus. You are blessed. Your children are blessed. Your spouse, your spouse is blessed in the name of Jesus. Thank you everlasting father. Your children's hands are blessed with the blessings of the Lord. Whatever they touch surely must be blessed. So right from today, whatever you lay your hands upon, prosper. In the name of Jesus, whatever you touch, surely must be blessed. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father, because I know, Lord, you have done it. To you be all the glory and honor and praise. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. I want you to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for all that you have done. Father, we are grateful. We turn all glory and honor back to you in you alone. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be all the glory. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you all so much for joining. Thank you for connecting. Remain blessed. Till I come your way by the special grace of God on Monday, hallelujah, we would have crossed into a new month, the month of May, hallelujah. Remain blessed and don't forget Jesus loves you and I love you too. And if I don't see you before Monday or talk to you before Monday, happy new month. We all will be alive. We will be alive to see the new month in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. We will see the new month. We will enjoy of all the goodies, all the blessings that the Lord has for us in the month of May because we will be marvelously helped by God. Hallelujah. Uncommon testimonies is our portion in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Yes, God bless you too. You're highly blessed and favored in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, God bless you too. Remain blessed. Have yourself a wonderful weekend. 
God bless you. Please, if you have not shared, please share this broadcast. Be an ambassador for Christ. Hallelujah. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen.